today I want to talk about the top 10 things you can do to protect your bounce house business. Now listen, we're in, a, in, a, in an industry where we are dealing with children, we are going into people's homes, we are bringing strange objects into to their world and their parties and their, their environment. There are people that are coming in and out that may or may not be part of that, that may or may not understand the things that are going on. So all of these things play a huge part in, 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 in causing catastrophe at, a, at an event. So how can you mitigate some of that? And what are the top thing, 10 things you can do to protect your bounce house business? Number 10 is maintain accurate records. This goes for everything from, from rentals to inspections to maintenance to incidents to f- customer feedback. All of this plays a huge part because what it does is it creates a paper trail that your business operates in a certain way over a certain amount of time. So if something does happen, you can show that normally these are the way that things are going at. And the, the thing that happened here was an anomaly. It was something that was out of the ordinary and it was not the way that, you know, we do business. Uh, it helps to protect your business by showing your history. Number nine is create an emergency response plan. What do you do if something happens? Where do you go? How do you how do you act? And this can go towards employees. What happens if your employees in a car wreck? What happens if you know something happens at an event? What if you know a unit goes down? What if you know anything? A lightning storm? Anything could happen. So what is your response plan? Um, developing a plan to handle these emergencies, you know, is, is paramount to you being able to, to act fast and, and create a a situation where you are the standard, you're the, you're the safety barrier. You know what's going on because I promise you the people around are not going to know what's going to go around and they're going to turn to other people who don't know what's going on. They call an EMT. EMT may not know what's going on with your equipment. If they call a policeman, he's definitely not going to know what's going on with your, your equipment. So you need to be the expert on scene and that comes with a, a response plan. Number eight is performing a background check and supervising your staff. This is really important. It goes from everything from driving. If they're driving your vehicles, they need to, you know, a driver's history. Also, like we said before, you're going into people's yards. You're going into people's homes. You're going to their environment. You need to know that your employees are trustworthy. You need to know that they're being supervised and then they're acting out of, you know, some kind of impulse or, or doing something crazy that they're not, you know, talking to someone's loved one that, that may upset something. They're not taking an item that doesn't belong to them. All of these things kind of go into it. So make sure that you perform that background check and keep that uh, as, as part of your maintenance and as part of your records that you did do that so that you can show you made the steps necessary to protect the customer, you know, and this is again, something that is not out, not the norm is out of the ordinary. Number seven is having a clear rental agreement. Having a rental agreement is one thing, having a clear rental agreement where you can explain it to them and they can understand and they should understand. This is all key. You can't have such you know, mumble jumbo legal jargon that it creates an opportunity for them to say, I don't know what was going on. You need to explain it to them. You need to go over it with them and you need to have a clear response showing that they know what the rules are. They're going to follow the rules that that is going to be monitored, that is going to be watched. It's not going to be something that's you know going to be used improperly and that will save you. I promise. Number six is using quality equipment. Listen, if you're buying this, the, the, the Walmart stuff or the you know Costco stuff and you're putting it out there for rental, you are using home stuff for commercial use and you are going to be liable when, when a kid gets hurt. Make sure that you're using quality equipment from a, from a reliable source and that it meets all the safety standards 
that are suitable for the commercial use. Don't fall into that trap of trying to do something that's cheap and uh, get stuck. Implement strict safety rules. Again, the manufacturer will tell you what, how to use the unit properly and the safety rules that will keep them safe during the use of that. But also, if there are other things that are involved, especially things that are applied to your area as far as weather or as far as, you know, just anything, um, you need to make sure that you implement that. If you live in Tornado Alley and, you know, <laughs> you're, you're, you're subject to, to severe storms make sure they understand it has to go down during storms number four is providing thorough training for your staff your employees can can help you or harm you especially when it gets in a situation where they just shrug their, their shoulders and say i don't know or i nobody told me you don't need any employees that's going to get you in a situation where they're doing things improperly and not caring to know how to do them properly. So make sure you train them. Make sure that they understand. Test them. Maybe not you know, a written test or anything like that, but go back behind them and make sure that they're doing the things that they're supposed to do. Because if you don't, again, keep those records that you're doing this. If you don't do this, then you're showing a pattern of neglect. Follow the safety guidelines. Again, this goes back to the the, the one before this one uh, with the, the the safety rules. The the manufacturer and the standard society for for uh, testing and materials have guidelines on the how to set it up, how to anchor it, how many anchor imports, how to supervise it things that should be done, how to operate it, follow these guidelines because if you don't and you use it improperly, someone's going to get hurt and it's going to be your fault because no one told anyone. You need to conduct regular inspections, and this is number two, uh, of, your, of your equipment and, and do the maintenance that needs to be done. This is so important because you putting things off is 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 paramount of you know disaster coming. And believe me, people will remember the little holes in the unit that you did not plug and then all of a sudden someone broke their finger or broke their hand or broke their foot or something like that and oh yeah, that slide was at my party 2 weeks ago and there was a hole in it then. People know and you know. So go ahead and get it fixed. It's better for you to have a unit that is down, that is not being rented because of the safety issues that are there, than it is to get out there and try to make those few bucks and open yourself up to a liability or a situation where someone can get hurt. The last thing we want to do is to see these kids out here getting hurt on equipment that's supposed to be fun for them and supposed to be you know, enjoyment for the whole family. We don't want to see anybody hurt make sure you conduct these inspections and do the maintenance as is required. If you can't fix it, then you need to get you a, a repair person in your area that, that can fix it. And again, deadline the unit if it can't go out safely. It does not need to go out. The number one thing that you can do to safeguard your bounce house business, obtain proper insurance i know believe me this is probably the thing that hurts most businesses the most as far as the bottom line is paying that insurance bill because it is a doozy and it's a whopper in our industry and having the right insurance and and make sure you're getting the right insurance a, a, a comprehensive liability insurance coverage that covers accidents, injuries, and property damage <coughs> and property damage is required. And you need to have it in the mounts that, that will, will safeguard you against you know having an issue. Make sure that you get the right insurance because not having the right insurance is a 100% it's not if it's going to happen, it's when it's going to happen. You're going to get caught up in it. I've said this before. I'm going to say it now. 
a simple broken bone can cost in the tens of thousands of dollars, I don't know anyone in the industry right now who can shell out that kind of money and it not hurt them or put them out of business simply because of one incident where someone got hurt and you didn't have the insurance. Now, that being said, you need to guard your insurance because making frivolous you know, uh, uh, claims against a, an insurance policy is really going to hurt you. It's going to cause your insurance to go up or it may be, you know, cause you to get canceled. So make sure you safeguard your insurance. Make sure you take care of it. Make sure you do the right things and you have the right coverage. But make sure you do have insurance. One other thing I want to tell you guys uh, before we uh, wrap this one up as as kind of a uh, a uh, runner up, um, and and that is um, to make sure that you are licensed, that you are paying your taxes, that you are doing the things that you need to do to stay in business. The last thing you want is a knock on the door from the tax man saying, hey, we just saw that you're renting all these inflatables on online and we want to know where's our money. And it can literally, they, I promise you, it will, it will, don't take them any time to do their investigation and they will get into the tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars and ask you where the money is. If you're operating a business without insurance, without a license, without uh, paying your taxes or stuff, you need to stop. You really need because you're hurting the industry. You're hurting the other people. And I don't have any qualms about you getting caught and you being forced to pay thousands of dollars in fines and fees for stuff that I have to do every day. I've said this a thousand times. There's no such thing as competition. That does not apply when you're not following the rules. If you're out there bouncing and you're not uh, insuring, you're not having licenses, you're not paying your, your your taxes, you're not paying for your insurance, you're not doing the things that you're supposed to do. That is not an even playing field and that is not competition. That is you gaming the system, you cheating the system, and you are giving the whole industry a black eye because you're doing it wrong and you're creating a situation where we're all going to suffer. I don't have a problem with you getting in trouble, I promise you. Hey, guys, listen, thanks for the, uh, listening to the video. I hope this helps you in your business. Make sure you keep track of those things that are going to keep you afloat, those things that are going to be the best for your business, and keep rolling them, keep at it, keep going. There's no such thing as competition. We're all in this together. If I can help anyone, let me know, and we'll see you in the next video.